so hi well the good noise podcast i'm shane i'm glory and we're here with uh carson from the callous style boys and we're asking some questions say about their upcoming album celebrity therapist so congrats on that by the way how do you feel about the response to the announcement so far uh it's been awesome uh it's been so cool um i have like major imposter syndrome about like our numbers and mm-hmm. stuff like that so um i don't know why i put numbers in quotes it's not like something that goes in quotes but um i have i have serious like worries about that but apparently the numbers have been good so i'm i'm just not gonna worry about it that's good that's <laughs> uh, good for sure the response has been awesome i mean it's it's my favorite thing that we've ever made so um i i can't wait for uh, everyone to hear the rest of it this sure. album is so fucking good. I'm actually upset that I have to wait until September 2nd to like talk about it and tell people how fucking great this oh. album is. Mm-hmm. You got the advance then. Yes, we got the yes. advance. And I actually okay, said good, the same good. thing to Greyhaven, who's on your shirt. Like, uh, that was an incredible album, and this album is fucking incredible too. I really can't wait oh, for everybody to so hear much. it. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, yeah, no, that Greyhaven record kicks ass. It does. And I, mm-hmm what's hilarious about it is like uh we finished recording oh gosh um had to be september of 2020 and Greyhaven got out of the studio a little bit after us oh wow and brent and i were texting and i was sending him roughs of our stuff and he was like i don't want you sending like a dropbox link to to anybody else so he he mailed me a cd of (laughs) this bright and beautiful world unmastered um and i was like i don't have a fucking cd player (laughs) so like we just like we would just uh me and maddie would just drive around listening to it just being like oh my god when this comes out like people's minds are just gonna be fucking blown Mm -hmm. so yeah no so then that tour that you guys were just on like that was all friends and everything because you were talking to us before the interview started that you and austin from limbs have been friends forever so that must have been awesome oh yeah no it was it was so good so we met we met Greyhaven. Well, I, I met Greyhaven for the first time many years ago, uh, like 2017, 2018. Um, they played a show in Atlanta to one person. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, they even talked about it when, when they were in Atlanta with us last. Um, and then I like we kind of met in a more official capacity when they were on tour with Norma Jean. Um and like they they opened that show and I was like front row, just like going crazy. And then I think we actually became like friends, friends when we played with them in Silent Planet, like right, but be- like literally the day before COVID shut everything down. Oh, wow. Um, so it was like it, it was but uh, we went and got pizza with them after and then they slept at our practice space that night. So uh, we were kind of just homies after that. And, and we've been homies since. So um being on the road with i I mean we couldn't have asked for two better bands to be on the road with for that long Mm -hmm. um we didn't uh, i knew austin from limbs but i didn't really know the other guys but we got like we got so close with those dudes like by the end of it we were just like oh holy shit we don't get to see all of each other tomorrow this sucks like it was it was and 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 i think i've texted each of them individually every single day since we got home i love that (laughs) that's good we just we miss them a lot yeah that's very wholesome um i just want to say my piece i really enjoyed the album overall the first single that we spoke about on the podcast i was very confused about i was like yeah i don't know know. what's in my ears right now i was i was curious to hear your reaction to it because i think i think i love it even more when people are confused (laughs) like when people don't know what they're listening to or don't exactly know like what box to put us in or something like that Mm -hmm. i love it even more i mean like it's it's just so cool to um to like introduce something new to somebody um i I don't know i like scaring people more than (laughs) i like selling (laughs) records so i don't know what's wrong with me (laughs) i'm so glad you liked it though glory i'm so glad yeah i loved it you guys definitely you did something new with this record and i thoroughly enjoyed it thank you thank you so much thank you so much i'm so so glad is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art um there's meaning behind both yeah Mm -hmm. um i don't want to give too much away um but uh so the name was something that i actually it was a song title from uh our previous like emo band that we were in like in high school Mm -hmm. um 
just because like I was obsessed with Scientology documentaries and stuff like that. And the idea of like Tom Cruise having a therapist just like really tickled me. Um, I don't know why it was just like very funny to me. Um, uh, and uh, like Tom Cruise and John Travolta in therapy and it just made me laugh. Um, and uh, I mean, we like named a song celebrity therapist and we never released it or anything like that. Um, and then when I wrote this record, I kind of was writing it about just how just about everybody in my life, including myself, had fallen into some sort of group think cult type deal. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, while the celebrity part is not very important and neither is the therapist part, really. I mean, I was in a heavy amount of therapy when I wrote this record, but um, it, the, the important part is the implication of being in a cult. Um, and that is largely what this record is about being a cult of, in a cult of your own design or um, one that's more social, whether it be, you know, everybody on Twitter, you know, leading you to think one way or, you know, QAnon, you know, anti-vaxxers, whatever. Yeah. I, I'd like to think yeah. that we tackled it all. Um, and then the album artwork itself is um, just sort of meaning to be like, yeah, I I don't know if anyone's picked up on it yet, but all the five guys on the cover art are wearing the same thing, like implying that it's the same person. Mm -hmm. And um, it's essentially just like holding, it, it's meant to be like holding yourself back and repeating patterns. And um, I, again, I don't want to give too much away, but the whole album works like a circle. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that they're all, holding each other back in a circle is it does play into it but I'll, I'll i'll let everyone else figure that out i don't want to give too much away okay wow Very okay uh so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album yeah i, I think that's what uh i when when y'all talked about one of the singles i, I think it, it was it was one of the two of you that is like i would love to know like how they come up with this shit probably um, glory <laughs> yeah. yeah um i don't really know i think i just uh i listen to a lot of like um experimental electronic music that sounds like just a bunch of um, my favorite type of music is just when someone like lays out an 88 key keyboard and then they're like i'm gonna assign one sound effect to each key and i'm just gonna hit each key <laughs> yeah. periodically with no you know, semblance of tempo or anything like that. So uh, that's my favorite type of music. Uh, I can't make it. I get too <laughs> bored. I get too ADHD. Um, so when I sit down to write and when we sit down to write as a unit, you know, because we kind of filter in and out with, with who writes what. Mm -hmm. But um, when I sit down, I'm just like, what's going to grab someone's attention immediately? And also, what is the music that I want to hear? Um, and it just so happens to be that I want to hear random metalcore noises. So like, I want it to be basically like if you had a soundboard and you were hitting five second clips of different bands, like every couple of seconds. Um, so I, I mean, and like the fact that we are like that single specifically that you talked about, what is delicious, like before we put it together, like in practice, um, Maddie, our guitar player, was like, I don't think that song is going to work live. Like, it's just, <laughs> it switches genres 90 fucking times. It's got mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I think overall it has somewhere around like 15 or 16 tempo changes. Jesus. It, it does a lot of things. Yeah, no, it's not wow. fun to play. Um, I mean, it is fun to play once we got it. But like, when we tightened it up and it all worked, we were like, oh, thank God. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, we, yeah. I mean, honestly we don't even know if it's going to work. And, you know, the, the fact that you liked it, Glory, that you liked the whole record is is a very good sign to me. That means that we did something right. Um, but yeah, it's a fucked up writing process. I don't know why we do it. I don't know why we can't just write, like, you know. Why can't you just write, like, fucking choruses. Octane Core or some shit? Like, <laughs> you guys are probably made making a lot more money. <laughs> Dude, uh, hey, listen, you don't. Don't worry about how much money I'm making. You don't. You don't know what kind of. You don't know what kind of bankroll math score is bringing in. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course we would make more money, but like that's you know that's not the music I like, you yeah. know. And I, I I I imagine that I have different tastes from you guys and and stuff like that. But 
you know, when I hear five finger death punch, I hate it. So it's like, <laughs> I will you. never. I love five finger death punch. I don't know about you. Preach. They're very silly. They're very goofy. I do. I do like that about them. They're definitely <laughs> there's, something. There's one lyric on. I, I for, me and Jackie, our bassist, always play this fucking five finger death punch song where he goes taking selfies on your phone, and like we just can't stop saying that one lyric over and over. That yeah, can't it's be like real. The way they it's real. I'll words, send like, it to yeah. you. I'll send it to you. It's Please. very good. <laughs> I think oh. it's called Champagne. Yeah, it's called Champagne. Okay, just oh, by five finger death punch. Sorry, I didn't make sure to, make sure you I check out the new album. No, it, it, it leaked, and I listened to it early. It is. God awful. I love what it. What they what they do? They they, they put out a, they got a new album coming out in September and it leaked like four months early. So I listened to it. It's uh, very not good. It's not all the way through. I made it somehow all the way through. It wasn't very good. <laughs> you could have been you could have been listening to Celebrity Therapist by the Cowboys. I didn't I didn't exactly. have the stream then. I don't you know. You should have found it. <laughs> yeah, you should have. <laughs> it's out there. It's out there. Uh, somebody's leaked it at this point. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to derail your question. No, it's all no good. you're all good. It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, so, what song off this album took the longest to write, and which one is your personal favorite? Uh, which one took the longest to write? Um, we had a we had a like eleven minute song that got cut from the record. Um, oh. yeah. Uh, nobody liked it but me. That's why. I got <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> everyone was like, not- "Carson, <laughs> no." <laughs> were there not enough tempo changes in the song? Is that why? <laughs> oh, there were like ninety. It was it was terrible, Jeez. and it, it was like at one point it went Weezer song, and like at one point it was like an Aaliyah song. Like it was fucked up. Um, that one that one didn't make the record, so that doesn't count. Um, what took the longest? I don't I don't know. So I, I think the thing about this record that really surprised all of us was how intuitive it all came to us because i mean we worked on our first album die on mars for so long um like we had that title die on mars since like probably like 2017 or something like that we knew we were going to call it that and we had like some songs written for it by then too um and you know just lineup changes and everything held it up and and that kind of thing so it was like we um we we didn't r- really think that we could do it again i guess because we had spent so much time on on die on mars but this one came together so quickly um i think the longest the one that took the longest to write was violent astrology just because it has like we i didn't really know what i was going to do vocally on it and uh, that's the that's the first song on the record and like there's so many layers in that one that our producer Corey was just like Hey, I'm gonna have to like cut like five vocal tracks. No. Like you're gonna have to make some cuts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh like there are some ad libs on that song. Like we have like teeth chattering in the background oh, of wow. that song. Like we just we we that song like kind of came together in the studio uh vocally. Um and it's in such a bullshit time signature that like I I was like, I'm just guessing where I'm putting the words. Uh <laughs> so uh that took really long to write but my favorite song is star baby the the last song oh. um i showed it to my parents uh like when we finished it in studio and i think both of them cried and i was like oh. all right I, and they they do not like our music at all it is like it is prime not only is it scare the hose music it's scare the parents music. Oh, definitely. so um they do not like it but that song they were like this is amazing and you wrote oh. something really special here um and like I, I even showed that song to my grandparents and like they really liked it. Oh. Um so I think it's probably the best song I've ever written. Nice. Um and you know, it, I think like after putting the listener through seven songs of just like pure like ah <laughs> like it's got <laughs> such a nice ending. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, you know, I, I like the way it ties up. I like the way it ties up. Oh yeah. Sure. Uh, so how did the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opener, be the opener, close to be a closer, shuffle around, see what fits? What was that process like? So, um, again, I don't want to give too much away, but the album ordering is uh, very important to the, like, concept okay. of the record. Um, and, like, there's a... I, I don't want to spoil this either, but I'm going to. Fuck it. Oh, okay. there's, a, there's a puzzle on the back of the album, like, on the back of the physical album okay. that, like, kind of gives 
a little hint into the ordering and everything like that. All the ordering was super intentional. Uh, like the ordering, like writing, like the ordering affected how we wrote some of the songs. Um, and kind of following that rubric uh, made, I think is what made it come together so quickly. Okay. But uh, no, we, we paid a lot of attention to it. And um, I, I don't know, again, I don't want like, I don't want people to like know the answer to the puzzle just yet. But like, it's like, I, I don't know. I think there are enough hints in the, in the ordering and, and how everything works that I think it'll, I think it'll reveal itself eventually. Um, someone that I sent the record to was like, Hey, is this it? And I was like, yeah, you got it. And I was like, okay, cool. Like people can, people can understand it. It's a fun little thing that we did. Uh, it was an idea I had like years ago that I was just like, no, 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 no. Like it's going to be ordered like this and written like this to give it this like sort of perfect flow. Anyway, long winded answer. <laughs> you okay, broke glory. So, Good job. Okay. No, no. I'm just trying to figure out like, so did you have like the song titles first and then say, okay, so I want to talk about this and this and then go from there, like ordering it. Or did you kind of already have the, the base of the songs written and then kind of write around I don't know how to word it. I'm just so, like, how, so, how did that work? Was the track list existent before like you guys started yes. writing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's like a, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this makes sense, but the ordering came first before anything. Okay. Yeah. And it was like, okay, this song sounds like this. So that means this song has to sound like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All I'm going to say, all okay. I'm going to say. Okay. okay. Now it makes sense. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 All right. Um, I think it helps with the flow a lot. Um, because like, I don't know, whenever I see like, and, and this is not to be mean to him, I'm not being mean to him, but Alan Harrington will tweet like the new blank record is 18 songs long. And I just like exhale. I'm just like, huh, what? <laughs> like that's too fucking long, dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we were like eight songs it's going to flow perfectly. There's no fat, all killer, no filler. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it helps. So yeah, no, but yeah, I, again, I can't, I can't give too much away. I can't give too much away. That's what you're yeah. here to do, man. You're here to spoil exactly. everything. Spill the beans. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm did, sorry. Did we schedule this too early? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, to you think. did not schedule this too early. You did not schedule this too early. But uh, I mean, I'll tell you off air if you want. If we have time. Please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, I can do that. Okay, do that great. Sure. Great, great. Uh, so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you were creating this record? Oh, man. Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, so um, we, everything had like just kind of shut down. Um, we were coming off of our biggest show ever, which was playing with Silent Planet and Grey Haven. Mm -hmm. And Silent Planet had like loosely thrown around the idea of like taking us on tour that summer. Oh wow! Um, oh. And we had even like we'd even like gotten the official offer in our email and everything like that. It was like very very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were like, oh man, like this is like this is becoming something. Like mm -hmm. you know, we put out an album. You know, the, uh, I guess six seven months before that, or uh, I can't, maybe it was almost a year old at that point. I don't remember. Time's fake. Um, but I was like oh man, like, you know, is this, is this the time for us to like quit our jobs and, you know, figure this out and, and go do this full time. And we had also just signed a record contract. So we were like, wow, uh, this is a lot. Um, and then we played that Silent Planet show and everything shut down and we were just like kind of demoralized. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the good thing that happened was we had like two or three tours booked um, along with the Silent Planet one. And um we were like, okay, so the soonest we can go into the studio is October. Um, that was what it was looking like because we had already had a couple songs and I wanted to strike while the iron was hot and all that stuff. And, you know, we had just put out a record that people seemed to really like. So um, then it was like, well, everything shut down. Uh, who wants to go into the studio in June? <laughs> um, so, uh, and I, I think it was, I think it was a lot of them um, just, I quit drinking going into, covid like i was just like depressed like binge drinking at the beginning of covid and so i went sober um uh relapsed after covid and i'm sober now again but not important um at the time like it was sort of just 
I had so much time to reflect on how I treated everybody around me and so much time to reflect on like my ego and that kind of thing. Not, not fun, mm-hmm. mind you yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, and kind of all of that uh, played into the lyrics and, and stuff like that. And um, I had like, one of the, one of the songs on the record is like not about me at all, but like, just looking back on it 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 like now i relate to it like way more mm-hmm. uh, um and now it like kind of hurts to to sing it because i'm yeah. just like ah shit i didn't even write this song for myself it's not even from my perspective but like <laughs> singing it now i'm just like ah ouch um I, I don't know i think it it's it's ultimately a record about about wanting to change um mm-hmm. and i don't think that anybody themselves can say that they have changed um myself included i that's for that's for other people to to say um so i think i think uh, i was in like a pretty depressed headspace about how i was as a person and i think i came out of this record a different person and i'm and even now i say like post the single dropping it's like wow i i am a even more different person now because you know we recorded it almost two years ago Mm -hmm. yeah so um you know yeah i i it was it was bad but it ultimately resolved in in into something good and that's kind of how the record works you know the the record ends on this like kind of hopeful note which i i hope that's what people take away and i hope people don't think i hate myself as much (laughs) as maybe i indicated on the beginning of the record fair enough (laughs) all right i'm Uh, very proud of you me too. Thank you, Glory. Thank you, Glory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should they do it in the car with friends and dark with headphones on? Is it a workout album, party album? What do you oh. personally recommend? Um I think you should I think you should go out into the woods um with with nothing. Okay. And then I want I th- not even your phone to listen to it. And the album will eventually just come to you from the woods. I um, agree. Been tested? But also, also <laughs> your car works, I guess. <laughs> so, like, if you go in the middle of nowhere and it just kind of comes to you, that's cool. But <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, do you ever? Um, this is a weird question. Do you ever like get so sleep deprived that you can like call up songs in your brain? Like, I you're so tired. Songs anyway, that, like a yeah, song. Yeah, I was gonna that's, say I could, I could do it anytime. Yeah, that that's the ideal way to listen to this album. Okay. Like, okay. I, I, I've got your single playing. Like, it, my brain's like a little radio. So I've got I've got your single you go. playing yeah, right yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. How does it go? Can you sing it for me? No, I'm not going to sing Come on, for Shane. you. No. Drop, drop on, the bar. Shane. All right, Glory, Come move on, on. dude. Come no. on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Glory, it's your question. Let's get a move on here. <laughs> I'm getting a sense of the dynamic here. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Uh, so this one should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words no more no less get it dude (laughs) (laughs) sure good job we'll take it (laughs) there you go that's great uh so in that same train of thought is there a certain feeling or emotion you want your listeners to have while going through the album uh man hungry um uh needing coffee um no uh i i don't know i just wanted to it i am so adhd that i'm hoping that in this day and age where um you know the the biggest platform is is you know 10 to 30 second tiktoks i'm hoping that the kids hear it and they're like well this has been a cool 10 seconds the callous style boys but and then something else happens in the song and they're like oh it's like tiktok yeah um that's <laughs> what i hope they they feel <laughs> that's that's what um that's what your three words should have been like feels like tiktok feels like tiktok <laughs> yes like TikTok. Is tiktok two words no no it's one word yeah 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 i don't fully understand it i'm i'm 25 i don't i don't know if i'm like young enough to understand tiktok but maybe one day I'm 19 and like, I'm like the, I'm right there and I don't get it either. You're 19 yes. Shane. We're young. Wow. You have a successful podcast for being a 19 year old. Thank you. Gloria's even younger than My, I am. I'm 17. 
y'all have a fucking festival and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Holy shit. You. I was not doing stuff this cool when I was 19. That's awesome. Good for you guys. Thank Good you. For y'all. Aww. That's so sick. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this album? <sighs> oh, man. Um, so I had my dad come in and do some guest vocals. Um, That's cool. On so cool. on the most on the most recent single that we got to do, um, that was a very good memory. Um, I'm I'm glad that I I had him do that because he's you know immortalized in a in one of our songs. Um, I also like just um, we so our current guitar player Dan, um, he's like one of my best friends. Um, he was not in the band at the time, but he was like doing like he was like restringing our guitars while we um, while we uh, <laughs> while while we recorded. And, you know, because uh, that our producer, Corey, is crazy and wants us to change strings on every guitar in between every song that we track. Okay. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. I don't think it's necessary even a little bit. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> love you, Corey. Uh, you're a sicko, but I love you. <laughs> Um, but, uh, Dan, Dan wasn't in the band at the time, but like, I think there was like this, this vibe in the room with him that was just like, oh man, we really love this guy. (laughs) We really want him to be in the band. Like, it was like, it was very, um, it was very nice. So I think that the best memory from making this record is getting closer with him for sure. Hell yeah. Love that. Um, so picture this, you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Oh, what did Austin say? Austin had a good answer to this, didn't he? Oh my god. So long ago. Uh, Do you want me to like rewind to the episode? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Austin had a Austin had a good answer to this. Ha shoot. You know, I'm I'm like my instinct is to say flaming hot nacho cheese Doritos. Okay. Okay. Um, because I think they're better than flaming hot Cheetos. Um I also think they're hotter. Um, and uh, I, I like to burn my mouth and clear my sinuses. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, that's a bad answer. That's a terrible answer. You were literally uh, just on tour answer. with the dude. I was literally just on tour with it. And Tyler, Tyler, their guitar player, he <laughs> kept getting these, um, he kept getting these like sour patch peach things. They were Ooh. so good. That sounds he was good. eating them like they were mm-hmm. crack. You know how they do like sa- oh, yeah. Sour Patch watermelons and mm-hmm. stuff like that? So they have peach ones, and he was just getting them like every day um, to the point where we were just like, are we splitting a bag? <laughs> um, it was adorable. Um, shit. What's my answer? You know what? I'm just I'm flaming hot nacho cheese Doritos. That's my answer. All right. Yeah, I was gonna say, what makes that a bad answer? Why, why'd you go back on it? Because I'm not going to do it every time, but like most of the, it, it also depends on the gas station. Oh, if enough. it's sheets, sheets, the menu was created by a five year old. Um, yeah. So I'm getting a burger with mozzarella sticks on it. Um, but what about if a Wawa? It's Wawa yeah. Well, there you go. Oh, man. If it's, if it's Wawa, Wawa, I'm getting a, I'm getting a hoagie. I'm getting a hoagie. There you go. Thank it's gonna you. It's going to take too long to explain what is going on the hoagie but it's a very yeah. interesting <laughs> order yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely i'd yeah. like to say thank you for actually picking a hoagie when you go to wawa because we've had people say wawa but i'm gonna get like the taco bowl and i'm like i didn't even know that existed <laughs> i just, just know no, what? is that like no what? that's <laughs> not where you go for a taco bowl exactly yeah, or like a burger now. or something yeah they got yeah, what like, part of the what part of the country are you guys in i'm in new jersey i'm in virginia oh, okay He's okay close. so yeah no so you have you're all Wawa then, Shane. Well, Wawa, Quick Check, yeah, that's what's here. Okay, yeah, no. So we have like Quick Trip and and Racetrack down here in Georgia, mm, okay. and like Quick Trip, Quick Trip solid. Racetrack has like the worst food imaginable. <laughs> like they have just <laughs> god awful food. So when I like my grandparents live up in Virginia, <laughs> they have a sheets like walking distance from their house, and it's like it's the best week of my life every single time because I'm just like. Let's go. Let's yeah. I'm going to every day right now. Exactly. It's connected to a McDonald's too. Nice. Oh my nice. god. I know. Wow. I know. That's crazy because I've never seen a sheets in Virginia. In my twelve years of okay. living here, never seen one. It's always like in, North Carolina. Right, yeah. They live in Fredericksburg, 
And oh yeah, that's like that, an hour and a half, two hours away. From yeah, me. I know. No, I guess. I guess. Yeah, no. The, Fredericksburg is weird. They they like to pretend it's the 1800s there. Mm-hmm. I guess Sheets Sheets was an into, integral <laughs> part of the 1800s. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, so on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be, and why? Oh shit. Uh, probably like a poke bowl. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We we like every time there's a poke place on on tour. I believe that is where we. That is where everyone gravitated towards. So mm-hmm. that you know what that or like Korean barbecue, we would we would be one of those two things. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good. Do you have reasoning behind that, or just because you like it? it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that good enough? Reason? Fair. Yeah, Fair that's enough. perfect. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so we're for- we're a uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we're like pho. Like we're all the uh, because we're so many people. All the components add up to one one thing. And I'm the broth. You're the broth. You're okay. wondering. You're holding yeah. it all together. Yeah. Would you I'm Would you be able to 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 assign a part of pho to each member? Because you said you're the broth, no. so no, no. I'm not able to. Okay, just <laughs> leave it to the imagination. The rest of the no band comment. members are just yeah. swimming in the broth. I I could tell the two of you, but I would have to kill you. <laughs> oh. Um, so for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what okay. would you ask me will be with a drink? With a drink? Yeah. Well, on death row, you, anything could be your last meal. You could order like a shoe, right? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't, if you we haven't a gotten shoe. a non-food item in quite a while. I'm eating a, yeah, I'm eating a, a copy of, of Paramore's 2017 <laughs> album, After Laughter. <laughs> okay. Is that a CD copy? Is that a vinyl? Is that a tape? All formats. <laughs> I'm eating the labs, baby. And how are All you washing formats. that down? Are you blending it up in a smoothie? No, no. I'm having a, I'm having, well, I've, I guess if it's death row. I've mm-hmm. never tried tab. I've never tried tab cola. So I guess death mm-hmm. row's a good a time as any. Okay. Exactly. I thought you were going to say, like, I'll wash it down with water. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't know. Uh, no, but for real, I'm probably having cookout as my last meal. Nice. cookout's too good i, I can't mm-hmm. not like I, I i'd ask for a singular cookout tray nice that's good and hopefully hopefully it'll make me nap and when they kill me i want them oh nice. that's a good plan <laughs> has anybody has anybody ordered like cyanide as their last no meal? we had like, someone order like, cop heart with? though yeah cop heart ah. we've had glass sand mm-hmm. i guess if you would never well the reason you might be on death row is because you tried human meat. Um, so I guess if you've never tried human meat, what, I mean, are they going to say no? If you feel like, so can I just so. get a guy? Okay. Can I just get right. a guy and I'll maul him? <laughs> I'd like a guy, please. <laughs> I'd like a man. If you take One the handcuffs guy, off please. me for 30 seconds, I'll take care of him. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Blade Runner. Wait, no, that's too sad. It's too depressing. Oh. Uh, hmm. Someone fall? Yeah, you know what? Fuck. What? Is, I don't know. What is happening down there? <laughs> Something dope. Something dope is happening <laughs> down there. <laughs> Something dope. Nice. Amazing things are happening at the Callous Cowboys house. Nice. The next album. Um, <laughs> ah, it's, yeah. No, I do have to get to work on that. Oh. But Oh. Any, anything yeah. you want to share about? No, no, it's fine. Back to the fiction world. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, fictional well, world. Fictional. We should have something else out in 2023. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Um, uh, fictional world. Fictional world. I guess Star Wars, just because I know mm-hmm. everything. You know, mm-hmm. that's see, that's where these characters fuck up in Star Wars. Obi Wan Kenobi hasn't watched hours of YouTube <laughs> anymore, like I have. Yeah, that's why he can't hide anywhere. I know yeah. where to go. Exactly. I know, you know the outskirts and shit. So that's good. You've done your research. I've done my research. Yeah. If Obi-Wan Kenobi had YouTube, the Empire would be fucked. <laughs> so true. Um, <laughs> so I have to only ask the last question, and every single person that we spoke to have said it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Yellow. Nice. Oh, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Good color. Yeah. All right. Like All an right. electric yellow. You know Oh, I mean? yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, I feel like all my answers have been 10 minutes long, so I'm just going to try and drag this one out to the same. No, no, no. <laughs> Why yellow? 
uh, it is it is the color primary so primarily associated with the occult. Um, I was told by my dad. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've never heard that reasoning behind. I've heard no, no, I've never heard it outside of my dad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> outside of my dad, I have not heard it. <laughs> Love it. Just, wow. so, Love it. He probably oh made God. that shit up. I don't know. I mean, maybe, but are we going to correct him? No. No. Nah. No. Nah, nah. no. Um, no. So as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Uh, celebrity Therapist, uh, September 2nd. Um, on Tuesday, we leave for our tour with Avatar and Light the Torch. That's awesome. Um, coming to a lot of cool places. Uh I guess the closest to you guys would be Norfolk, Virginia, is where that's oh. coming. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, shit. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, we have another single dropping in uh, a little bit. I can't say when, but it's, it's coming out soon um, with a video that looks like a fucking movie. I'm very proud of it. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, then in September, we're out with Rolo Tomasi. And then we should have another tour announced maybe by the time this comes out. I don't know, though. But Ooh. there you go. Yeah. Nice. Oh. All right. Oh, well, thank you for now. This has been Carson from the Callous Style Boys, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.